Welcome to today's topic. We are going to be talking about fasting and specifically we're going to talk about intermittent fasting and time restricted feeding and really exploring is it necessary for weight loss? Is it helpful? You may have encountered a lot of fasting protocols or seen people talk about fasting and I just want to kind of break down some of these thought patterns around fasting so that you feel empowered about understanding if it's really necessary or essential for you with your fat loss and weight loss goals. So I think when we are approaching our weight loss goals, our fat loss goals, we tend to gravitate towards things that are quick fixes. We want something that is going to give us results as quickly as possible. It's very natural to want to get results quickly in life. And you know, fasting is something that seems to promise quick results. Um, if you fast, you can lose weight quickly. If you fast, it's going to be the elixir of life. It's going to solve all these problems for you. And anytime we're thinking about any kind of like nutritional approach or strategy, we always want to really think about like, what does the science say and assess what's actually been researched. I actually did a ton of research about fasting a couple months ago. I went through a ton of different research, research studies. I actually put together a presentation for a group and you know it was really interesting to sift through all of the research about fasting and actually look at does this actually cause weight loss or not and the thing that the research said over and over again was fasting is not necessary for you to achieve weight loss and it can actually backfire on you i want to tell you a quick story both from my personal experience and then one of my clients personal experiences so we'll start with my client this client came to me last year and she had been doing intermittent fasting. She had been trying intermittent fasting and it had not been working for her. She said actually she'd been gaining weight. And then when she came into my program, I started having her eat breakfast, which she wasn't doing. I had her eat more food overall, eat more protein, um, eat more carbohydrates, just optimize the amount of food that she was eating throughout the day and she dropped 10 pounds in three months. And that was a really big like aha moment for her. She saw that this quick fix thing, like fasting, very trendy, it actually didn't produce results. And what did produce results was like going back to the basics, the basics of, you know, how much am I eating? What am I putting in my body? Am I eating consistently throughout the day? Am I having enough protein? And when she put those things into play, she started to get results. Personally, my experience, I've done some uh, time-restricted feeding and some like alternate day fasting. My experience personally has been that it caused me to then overeat like not just the next day or that week, but like for a few weeks. And this is very natural and normal because anything that restricts your food or deprives you can trigger um, like backlash eating or recovery eating. Remember, hunger is very biological. Your body needs food. Your body is designed and programmed to seek out food. And when you have too little food and you have your body fat stores drop too low for your genetic set point, it's going to be, um, it's going to be like very hard to maintain. You're going to experience that backlash eating. And so my experience with fasting has been, yeah, sure, it like dro I dropped a few pounds on the scale, but at what cost? I actually started eating more. Um, I started feeling like really uh, unenter un un unenergetic, right? I had fatigue the day that I fasted. I had headaches. I felt lethargic. I was consumed with thoughts by food. And so, you know, if you are out there and you hear people promoting fasting, they're probably not telling you about all of the potential negatives of it. Anytime we assess whether or not we should do something, we wanna think about the negatives, right? There's negatives potentially to uh, counting your food, to doing macro counting as well. And it's important that you think through your history, your personality, your approach, your goals, and make sure it is the right fit for you with your goals. So for me, I just can't recommend fasting, and it's something that I've really seen there be like backlash against with people's bodies and there's just not science to bear out that it's necessary. You know, it's it's not necessary because one, food is enjoyable 
if you restrict something that's enjoyable and biological, it's going to be very hard to maintain that. Very few people can maintain true fasting protocols. You're already doing time-restricted feeding, by the way. It's called sleeping. So you actually don't need to add in another protocol. You can just like eat the way you're supposed to eat. Like eat throughout the day, eat regular meals, eat carbohydrates, eat fats, eat protein, eat a solid balanced diet. And that will actually be what drives results for you. Um, another thing is I want you guys to think about what's actually going to produce results. And that is number one, quantity. We neglect quantity. Sometimes we are under eating. A lot of women come to me and they struggle with under eating. If you've gone through years of dieting, um, if you've gone through years of self-imposed restriction or just under eating, your body down regulates. And it may be difficult for you to lose weight until you refeed your body and you bring your metabolism up through more calories. It's also important to think about like what's sustainable long-term. Fasting is just not really sustainable or enjoyable to do. If you're in a mid fast and you get invited out for like lunch with like somebody you're interested in going on a date with, what are you gonna say? Like, no, I'm fasting. Um, it just really interferes with like your lifestyle and it's not necessary. And then research, like what does the research say? Before jumping on any kind of like nutritional bandwagon, I want you to think about like, what does the research actually say about this particular protocol that I'm looking at and is it is it supported by research? I'm actually going to get results with fasting. I know some people just don't have like an appetite in the morning and I think it's really valuable to tune in to your own hunger signals and awaken your hunger. One of the things I love to do is I wake up and I have a cup of gen ginger lemon herbal tea and so I brew like ginger or lemon ginger tea and then I add fresh lemon juice to it. And that really awakens my, awakens my digestion. So it helps me like go to the bathroom. It helps just kind of trigger those digestive juices. It helps awaken my hunger. So then I'm not force feeding myself, but I'm also not going hours without eating. I really recommend that you start your morning with like lemon water, lukewarm lemon water, herbal tea. It will awaken your appetite, plus it'll get your digestion moving. I know for me, like I like to poop before I eat my first meal. I don't know about you, but like that's very enjoyable to me. Like I actually did not poop this morning and I'm annoyed. Um, and that's okay, I'll poop tomorrow. But I'll poop when my body's ready. Can't force a poop, y'all. Um, but when you delay eating like synthetically or artificially, like you're forcing yourself into some kind of protocol, you're dishonoring your body's internal signals. And I love to pair like your eating signals with macros because I think it's a really powerful way to fuel yourself for your athletic goals, your performance goals, your weight loss goals, but also to make sure you're honoring your body. So the process that I use that gets clients results is macro counting. And combining that without forbidden foods and without extremes, but getting your body moving daily you know, I believe in this process so much for causing weight loss that I actually have a guarantee in my program that if your waist measurement doesn't decrease by 6% in the 12 weeks, I'll work another 12 weeks with you. And literally every client that I just had in my last round of coaching, everyone like exceeded the 6% who did all the things, right? Even the people who didn't do all the things, like some of them still got 6% or more. So if you follow the protocol, like it will work. That's how much I believe in it. Um, and while people can't like 100% guarantee weight loss, I have just seen this borne out in my client population that when you implement the things, you will lose fat, which we measure by your waist measurement. So like macro counting is very valuable for two reasons. One, it teaches you deep nutrition knowledge. So if you're confused about nutrition, if you don't understand the nutritional composition of foods, if you don't know how much protein is in an egg, if you don't know how much fat is in peanut butter or you think peanut butter is all protein, if you're just hella confused about nutrition, then macro counting is a great place to start because it will teach you about nutrition. And then it also gets you results. It also on the court produces results efficiently. And so that's why I do teach macro counting in my program and I think it's such a valuable skill for women to learn just because you will gain so much nutrition knowledge while also working on your goals. 
Um, so that's everything I wanted to cover for you today. If you have questions about fasting, please post them um, on my Instagram and I'd be happy to chat more with you about it. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about fasting. And while there are some potential quote unquote health benefits like markers for inflammation and things like that, we also want to think about you know, stressing ourselves out increases inflammation. So if we're like being super stressed out, trying to only eat at certain times of the day or delay eating, even though we're hungry because we're trying to fast and do all these things, that actually increases stress in your body. And I think a lot of people don't think about the potential negatives that go along with a protocol as well. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, I will talk to y'all soon and I appreciate you joining and listening today giving me your ear as always. It's my goal to empower women in all aspects of their health, physical, mental, emotional, relational, and spiritual. So thanks for tuning in and I will talk to you soon.